Howdy folks, video today is about essential and non-essential phrases, learning how to identify them and how to punctuate them correctly. So before we get into that, I just wanna give you just a quick review um, of what we've covered so far. So what I would recommend is you press pause on this video right now and just kind of quiz yourself, test, do I have a good understanding of these concepts that we've looked at so far? If not, go back through and take a look at some of those old exercises, some of your old notes and make sure that you are understanding where we're at so far, because if it hasn't gotten complicated yet, it will get complicated in this video. Um, so make sure that you're taking notes, write down um, definitions and examples and ideas that we're talking about, because this starts to get tricky. Thanks, English grammar for making things hard. Um, so in this video, particularly, we're going to talk about non-essential versus essential phrases. Um, this is going to be kind of a two-part video, because the second part will talk about a specific type of non-essential phrase that's just a little bit more specific, but also pretty common. Um, so without further ado, let's start off with some non-essential phrases. Um, so non-essential phrases are usually groups of words. They could be single words. They could be um, phrases. They could be entire clauses uh, that really help us define what we're talking about um, in a sentence. So words to look out for that might indicate like, hey, I'm working with an essential versus a non-essential clause are words like who, whom, that, which, or those. Um, and so these are clauses or groups of words that tell us essential information about a subject, kind of in comparison to a larger group of people or things. Um, and if we remove these from our sentence, the fundamental meaning of our ch sentence changes. Um, so do not use a comma to separate essential clauses from elements of these sentence. These are just going to be part of your standard sentence. No punctuation needed for essential clauses. So let's take a look at some examples. Um, I like the person who was nice to me, right? This is giving me additional essential information about who we're talking about, right? I could say I like the person, but if I wanted to get more specific and tell you which person in a world of, you know, 7 billion people I'm talking about, I'm talking about the one who was nice to me. Essential information about this person in a larger context. Um, students that often cheat are just harming themselves. This is another example of an essential clause. If I remove that often cheat, the fundamental meaning of my sentence changes because that would say students are just harming themselves. And that's not true. That's a totally different subject, right? Um, I'm just talking about students who are often cheating that are harming themselves. Not every student everywhere are harming themselves. Big difference. All right, let's take a look at some non-essential clauses. And when we take a look at non-essential, I want you to think about what makes something, like this is the ultimate question of this video, right? What makes something essential versus non-essential? It kind of boils down to two things. One, is this phrase or clause or word interrupting my idea? Or is this changing the meaning or the context? Or is it just providing some extra additional information that would be nice to know? If it's just nice to know information, it's non-essential. If it's essential information, don't put commas around it. Like we need that in there. Um, these are also sometimes called non-defining terms, but that's the way that I like to think about it is like this phrase is not defining what I'm talking about. It's not providing me that essential information. It's extra stuff. So I call it additional information about the subject. And if we take this out, we might lose some details but the meaning remains the same. And that's the big thing. Um, that's why this is non-essential versus essential is kind of highly contextual. It depends on the sentence that we're writing, right? Um, if we change a couple things in the sentence, what was an essential phrase might become non-essential. All depends. All right, so we are always going to set these off from the rest of the sentence with a comma or a parenthesis. So here's some examples. I planted some roses, which are my type of favorite type of flower. I don't need this second phrase here, this which phrase, to define what roses are, right? It's nice to know that they're my favorite. They're not. Roses are mediocre at best. Throwing shade on roses today. Um, but you don't need to know that for this sentence. That's extra information. So Adam, thinking hard, trimmed his beard carefully, right? This is extra information. This is how I trimmed my beard, right? I was thinking really carefully, make sure I get those edges nice and clean. I do need to shave, don't I? Um, so this is extra information. It's kind of interrupting my flow of my sentence. Um, and so I'm going to separate that off with commas. Or this last one, the author who graduated from the same university as I did gave a wonderful presentation. So here's an example of one of those who phrases um, that is non-essential, right? Because I don't need this info to tell you which author or that the author gave a wonderful presentation. This is like extra information. I'm interrupting my thought um, to tell you this extra info, this additional information. So that's the big thing. So 
um, here's what you should do when you come across something that you feel like it interrupts the flow of your sentence. You should try reading your sentence without that phrase in there. So I take Adam thinking hard, trimmed his beard carefully. And if I'm like, I'm not sure if this gets commas or not, take it out, read it this way. Adam trimmed his beard carefully. Sentence does not change, right? So because this phrase did not change my sentence, I'm going to put commas around it. It's non-essential. Or if I'm feeling like it's interrupting my sentence, that might be an indicator that I might need to put some commas in. Or the other big one is if you can move this phrase around and it doesn't change. So I could say, thinking hard, Adam trimmed his beard carefully. It's basically the same sentence, like nothing's changed by me moving it to the beginning of the sentence. Um, still going to separate that off from comma, with commas. Okay, so here's kind of our, our quick review. Um, for non-essential phrases of thoughts, for here's an example, for practicing grammar, at least for most people, is like hitting your hand with a hammer. It's true. Um, so the way that I know that I have to put commas around that is because I checked it. So if I left this out, does it still make sense? Practicing grammar is like hitting your hand with a hammer. Totally makes sense, right? Um, the meaning does not change by adding this extra phrase in here, this non-essential phrase. Um, if I move the element, does it still make sense? At least for some people, practicing grammar is like hitting your hand with a hammer. Yep, if I move it to the front, still the same sentence. And then lastly, do I feel like it interrupts my ideas? And that might be my first indicator that I need to look at this phrase and decipher whether it gets commas or not. Um, and if I feel like it does, maybe I'll do these other two checks. Um, but yeah, this definitely interrupts the flow of my sentence. And that's compared to my essential phrases are the student falling asleep in his chair drooled on the girl next to him. I need this phrase in orange here because it defines which student I'm talking about. Um, if I do that, if I say that the student drooled on the girl next to him, well, which student is drooling on who now, right? I need to know which one is the one that fell asleep, right? So that's essential information about the student. Okay, let's do some practice. Um, I want you to try to identify where the commas go in the following sentence. So make John Cena proud, tell him where the commas go, press pause and give it a shot. All right, got it? Check your answers here. So Randall, feeling too hot, jumped into the lake. This feeling too hot, extra info, don't need it. The school library is my favorite place in the school. That totally works. You don't need to know that it's next to the cafeteria. Put commas around it. She promised that the movie would be entertaining. Despite its bad reviews, is non-essential. Like I read it without that phrase. Sentence didn't change meaning. Um, so I'm going to put that, uh, put those commas around that phrase. All right. Um, this does get complicated. Does get complex. It takes a lot of scrutiny to figure out. Like when you're just looking at a jumble of words, what is essential, what is non-essential. Um, but just do your best to remember, practice reading that sentence by taking out whatever phrase you're thinking about. And if it doesn't change the meaning of the sentence, um, put commas around it. All right, good luck, folks.